Welcome back, everybody. It's Friday, December the 17th, and this is Monday Morning Briefing, episode number 58, I believe. And it is Friday when I'm recording this. This week has been nuts. I, I know we had talked about in the Monday Morning Briefings, my last ship date was going to be last Friday, which was the 10th. And uh, we pretty well hit that, but I had a few that just had to wait for a minute because I was waiting on a couple little things for them and stuff like that as far as hardware and stuff. And so we got most of those wrapped up this week. I should ship the last bit of my ships today, which so far everything is shipping really well. I haven't really noticed anything. Our UPS orders especially, which is what I ship all of our custom stuff, just because I can insure it a little bit better and track it a little bit easier um, for those type of things. And uh, it's a little bit more expensive to ship UPS. But on something that maybe you know a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, I want to be sure that that uh, that we've got some insurance there and that it's going to get where it's going to get in a timely fashion. But the so far, all of those are delivering just right. Um, they're they're not taking really any longer. The only real shipping problems that we've had have been through um, some of the smaller stuff on the leathercraft side of things, which we do ship USPS, and we've had like two or three that are just stuck in transit. Um, we've tracked them. And uh, for the customers, and they're just kind of floating around. They're they're moving. They're not lost. They know where they are, but they just haven't gotten there. But that's only like two or three. And out of all the orders that we did for the Black Friday sale, I figure that's pretty good. If you're doing that that low of a percentage of actual problems on shipping on that large of an of an amount of shipments, I figure that's probably pretty good, especially this this time of year. But we are working with those customers and trying to be sure that they get their product. If they don't, we'll take care of it and uh, send it out again because it'll probably end up coming back here sometime in January. So, uh, but we'll get them taken care of. But like I said, it's only three or four of them, uh, something like that. It's not very many. Um, but then as far as our custom order shipments, they're all running pretty smooth. So I think the the few, I've got two or three that'll ship today and I'll be done with all my ships. The rest of the stuff will just be some local stuff that I'll wrap up this weekend. And those customers will have all next week to pick them up. I'll probably shut down the shop because I've got some family coming in on Wednesday. And so we'll probably be out of the shop from Wednesday until the following week. We will be in the shop the week after that, maybe doing some traveling for uh, New Year's Eve. Um, that deal, but other than that, we'll probably we'll be in the shop. So if you do need something or whatever, uh, we'll we'll be operating as normal, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch that phone call when you call. Hopefully we'll be in the shop. But this last week has just been kind of crazy, and that's why we're doing this on Friday. I just got in here, and, and I wanted to be sure and, and stay on top of what we were supposed to be doing so we could get that out. We did have the Mingle on Main last weekend, and it was a lot of fun. We had a ton of people here. They actually, last year, it was just in the south side of downtown, just right here where our building is. And this year, they actually did on the north side as well. And so they had events all day long for kids and, and different things going on, vendors all up and down downtown, people cooking and then selling uh, arts and crafts and stuff. There was a lot of vendors here. So it was a really, really good turnout, I felt like. Uh, the shop was open and we were super busy and we actually had a few people come that uh, follow us on YouTube here and stuff and made the trip to just come down and hang out this weekend or this past weekend at the on the Mingle on Main and it was a lot of fun. So they came in the shop and hung out and then they got to do the wine walk and just kind of experience uh, our little town here. So that was a lot of fun and I want to thank them for coming out because we really enjoyed, enjoyed having them. But Saturday was just a busy day. Um, we got up that morning, we went to the cow show in Gonzales. We got, I helped them get set up. I was able to see my little girl show one class and then I had to get moving because I had to get some um, food and stuff for the shop for the, for the event that night and uh, got that done and actually had some visitors middle of the day that came in and, and there and we visited with them some and then got ready for the deal. I kind of cleaned up the shop because it, it looked worse than it does now. It's pretty pretty well wrecked out because we're, we're uh, hustling in here and trying to get products built. But we got it cleaned up. I had some really good friends that I've had for forever that uh, came to pick up some stuff that we had made them for Christmas. They ended up staying better part of the event and um, and then went home after that and so that was great to hang out with them had some other friends that live here locally that came by and uh, hung out with us so it was a lot of fun next year if you if you didn't make it this year could make it next year uh, um, and you, if you can i think you'd really enjoy it and like i said we've got a little hotel here there's some bed and breakfast around and stuff like that so it might be a fun little trip but it was a uh, it was a good event we we actually there was a lot of local people that we're in the store and we're doing some Christmas shopping actually because we actually have some a little bit of inventory out there. So um, between serving our wine for the wine walk outside and doing doing the sales on the inside, it was a pretty 
pretty crazy night, but everybody was having fun and and, um, and sipping on wine, so everybody was pretty laid back. But we're in the shop today, like I said, just gonna wrap up some stuff. Real quick, I wanna send out a thank you to somebody, and I'm gonna go ahead and mention their name or their business name because they sent it with their name on most of the stuff, And, and uh, but it's Shelton's Custom Tooling. They sent us a, a gift here. Um, he actually purchased one of our caps and then did some did some accent work of his own on it and uh, and tooled the bill here and and sent that to us and he put a little his little logo right here on the on the side of the mesh back this is one of our snapback caps here with a patch logo on there and I think that's really really neat so Shelton's custom tooling I really really appreciate that we're gonna put this with the other stuff we've got a few things that people have made for the shop just as kind of a thank you we kind of put those out on the retail floor and show those off and uh, that when people come in, they can see them. And I might even wear it occasionally um, when we're going out and about. And he also sent us some of these little coasters, which are really cool. I, I'm assuming they're coasters, but yeah, just a little leather thing, uh, hair on hide. I think that's pretty cool. Looks like he's got a die made for that, maybe. Maybe you're cutting these out by hand. If you are, I'm sorry. Yeah, that would be really a pain in the butt to cut a bunch of these out by hand. But um, if you are, kudos to you, man. But these look great. Um, we really appreciate that stuff. And like I said, we're gonna, what I really wanna do is, if you've been to the shop, we've got really tall ceilings. And what I'd like to do on the retail is build a shelf way up high where, uh, you know, things can just kind of sit and be protected. They're not gonna walk off. And uh, I can put some keepsakes or gifts like that uh, up on that shelf just to kind of show off when people come in, they can kind of look at those kind of things. But like I said, the retail floor is not completely done, but we're, we're working on it as we can and just kind of adding a little bit here and there. Uh, the fun part about having a store again, like I said, I had a store for 10 years and then for seven years while, we, while our babies were little, I didn't really have one. It was just a private studio setting and uh, really enjoyed that. It was nice and quiet and, and a lot easier to manage just because I thought I needed to be out of the shop for a day for some reason. I didn't really have store hours, so it wasn't an issue. Um, I just had voicemails to get back to when I got back uh, or emails. And, um, but now I'm, I'm really enjoying having a storefront again, especially in a, in a little downtown like this where it's, you know, kind of active, but we're still able to focus and get work done. We get a surprising amount of visitors here from both uh, out of town and local folks, but it's not like it was years ago. I mean, we were on a major road coming into Bryan College Station and we would get, I mean, that, that door was always opening. There was people there all the time, which is great for business. But if you're, tra if you're the only one there and you're trying to get work done, it's really hard to, uh, to kind of balance that and that's why we used we uh eventually hired hired a gal that ran our store and she ran our store for a long time and that really really helped here we're not at that point yet it's not too bad when we have visitors we're glad to have them in to come in have a cup of coffee visit see the shop whatever we get a lot of local guys just kind of coming by to, to just check us out and see what we do offer and what we do um, we get a lot of people that ask if we do boot and shoe repair we do not do any kind of boot or shoe repair um, it's just kind of a normal deal. If you have a store you and you don't do boot and shoe repair, you probably have a lot of people coming in too. Something about leather, once somebody knows you do leather work, they assume you can do any leather work. And, and yes, we've had people call or come by with chairs or you know have a couch they want us to come out and look at and see if we can, re we don't do any upholstery, none of that. But it's just a common uh, misconception that if you do leather work, you can work on anything, which yes, technically you can. And, um, but when it comes to like boot repair and upholstery, that's really out of my lane. So we don't really do any of that kind of stuff. And it kind of disappoints some customers because they come in, they, they're hoping that we're gonna offer boot and shoe repair and stuff like that, because that is a big market. So if you're looking, if you're looking for a market where you can really stay really busy and, <clears throat> and build a good work of repair and stuff like that, and you like doing it, boot and shoe repair is a, is a really good industry to get into. Um, you can make really good money doing it because you're repairing stuff. The cost of uh, your expenses are usually fairly low, uh, depending on what you're doing. But like I said, it's a, it's a different deal. You got to really enjoy repair work to, to, uh, to want to do that. But if that's your deal, you can definitely, definitely there's room in that market for sure, because there's a lot of people out there hunting a boot and shoe repair shop. The nearest one to us that we recommend is in Weimar. And uh, there's a fellow over there that's got a uh, boot and shoe repair shop there. And that's, I think he builds a few pair of boots, but he mainly just does repair. And so, but that's 30, 45 minutes away from here, which isn't too bad of a drive. Um, so most people will just go there. But yeah, we don't do any boot and shoe repair in here or anything like that. So, but a lot of times we just get people coming in just wanting to see the store. Um, that happened this year again at the wine walk. You know, people just wanted to kind of see what it looked like in here because they see it all the time, but they don't ever have time to stop or whatever in there. They're here for the event, and so they wanted to come in and just check us out. But we are down to the wire now. We are, uh, we'll do the, the snowman update here in a minute, but as you probably know, and you probably, uh, you may be a little upset about that, but we're getting 
getting really close to Christmas. So um, I think I would say if you ship something on Monday, you'll probably be okay still, depending on where it's going. Um, but I think that's going to be cutting it close anytime after that. It kind of feels like, for me personally, it feels like Christmas kind of snuck up on us because we were so focused on the Black Friday sale for you guys um, right there at Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, I really wasn't paying attention to Christmas. And now we're here, and it seems like that last couple of weeks has just flown by. And uh, I didn't really think I had that many orders, and I really don't. Um, I didn't overload myself at all. But it just kind of feels like Christmas really, really came fast. And I knew it would right after Thanksgiving, like every year. We all know that once you do get through Thanksgiving, the next thing you know, it's Christmas. Luckily, I've done most of my Christmas shopping already. I've got a few things that I've got to line out logistically on how I'm going to uh, pick it up and then hide it from the recipients and things like that so that's kind of fun but we've got all next week to do that so that's why i want to try to get all of our orders done this weekend if you're still hustling and you've got quite a few orders to get done i'm going to encourage you to try to put in the time this weekend um, maybe work some later evening something like that and that way you've got all next week in case something happens because if you you know if you mess something up or if you run out of something at least you you can kind of scramble there next week because christmas is on saturday so you're going to have a full week pretty much but uh, i would encourage you to try to try to get those ships anything you've got to ship get those out first of the week and then any of your locals or if you've got to hand deliver it even that's fine a lot of us will do that at christmas time it you know just kind of push those local ones off a little bit that way we can ensure that we're getting our shipments out and then we can hand deliver if we need to heaven forbid even uh you know christmas eve you can you can hand deliver that thing if you had to and then maybe if you do that for somebody and you get there and they're having a uh, christmas eve christmas party maybe you can just partake in that as well you know when you get there they'll invite you in and then you can hang out and have a cocktail or something and, and enjoy and enjoy a little christmas eve party before you head back to the house but christmas is a crazy time and uh, we all know that and we deal with it and it's, it's kind of our super bowl as we used to say in the shop and so but we will be glad when it's over we can all just relax uh december 25th and just chill out and and uh, prepare for the new year a lot of people will take off a lot of your companies remember that like your tanneries if you're buying from the tannery some of your tree shops if you're a saddle maker and you're getting saddle trees a lot of tree companies will shut down um, and some other companies will kind of limit their their business um, orders and stuff during that week between christmas and new year's it's kind of a, sh a popular shutdown time in our industry i used to always close between christmas and new year's just because you know, we were so just wore out by the time Christmas came that I just gave everybody that week off, paid vacation kind of deal, just to, just to kind of recoup and relax and regenerate. And so this year, I don't know, I'm going to do some of that, but I'm not going to be, you know, out of the shop all the time because I'm here all the time. I'm always in town. I'm, I'm always in the shop. So we'll be here and around, but, but I probably will take off a little bit of time and just kind of relax and get ready for 2022. We've got some really neat stuff coming in 2022, or at least I'm hoping it's going to be neat. Um, we've talked about in the past uh, recently that we were experimenting and researching on some website design changes and some things that will make it better for you guys and, and easier on us as well. The biggest problem that we have is we have the retail store now where a lot of these products are also on the website. And so especially particularly the caps and t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. And there has been a few, uh, few situations there where a, say a sweatshirt is sold on the website and then somebody comes in the next morning and we haven't done the ships yet or the, uh, you know, packaging and I sell a sweatshirt to somebody and it's the last one and that's the same one that sold on the website the night before. So we really didn't have a good system to make sure that both of those were communicating effectively and so that we know, you know, so we don't oversell stuff. We've, we've kind of fixed that in general, just kind of on a, uh, a very analog way, which is that if I cut, say on belt material packs, it would happen with that too sometimes. But what I'll do is if I have 148 units of the belt material packs, I'll only put 135 on the website. That way we have kind of a buffer there. So if, uh, cause sometimes those, those things also on the website, if they get hit really hard, really quickly, it's all done all, all, you know, digitally, it's all on the web, you know, in the cloud or whatever. Um, but it happens so fast if everybody's hitting that product pretty hard, um, they can sell two of them at the same time, even if there's one left and two people hit the buy now button or whatever to check out at the same time, it'll actually oversell by one. So we've kind of just, you know, in a, in a very manual way, fix that problem by just being sure we don't put all of our inventory on the website at one time. Um, but, but in general, the, the way we have it set up currently is just a little bit cumbersome. We've had some workaround deals that we've put in there to help with that. 
but we found another solution that I think is going to be much easier uh, and on us in the store too because that system doesn't work real well. If you've come to the store and bought some stuff from me before, uh, you may have noticed how long it takes me to kind of figure up your 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 checkout, you know, your card or whatever, and, and get you checked out there at the counter. So we're just trying to make everything a little bit more efficient. Just since we do have people coming here to actually purchase stuff, I've never really had to deal with that uh, because when we had the the retail store, we didn't really sell anything on the website, so everything was just in store. And um, and then when I was selling stuff on the website, I didn't have a store. Well, now we're full circle where we've got both. So we found something that I think is going to work. We should hopefully be launching that first of the year. Um, that, that may be something that I'm working on during that week between Christmas and New Year's. We've pretty well rounded it out. I've just got to do a bunch of um, updating and just cleaning it up and polishing it, making sure everything works correctly and all that. We aren't quite clear. One of the biggest hiccups is just being quite clear on how we're going to retain your accounts currently so if you currently buy from us and you've got your my store account on our website where you can log in see all your digital patterns that you've purchased re-download re them if you need to that kind of stuff you can see your order history and everything else in there we don't store any kind of payment information in there nothing like that um, but we it, it'll it'll store any digital product so if you lose the file or lose the hard copy you can hop into your account re-download it print it off again you've got another copy of it um, we want to retain that for sure for those older customers that have been with us for a long time. And um, and so we're trying to figure out a workaround on that. I think we've got it figured out, but because of the new system, you will set up a new account, basically. I, 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 if I've got that right, we, like I said, some of this we've got to figure out. But um, you'll set up a new account. You'll it, It'll work the same way, but it'll be through a new system that uh, will be much more efficient, much more user-friendly for you as well as different options. Not everybody uses PayPal, um, not everybody likes PayPal, so it'll have a lot more payment options there too. And I believe it's going to help us open up international shipping. I know a lot of people that follow us here have been begging me to open up international shipping and I, I so appreciate your patience. Everybody has been really understanding about that. We have shipped a few things to Canada, but it's very manual. You've got to call me, we can figure out what it is, Claudia takes it to the post office, figures out what the shipping is going to be and all the extra paperwork and things that we have to do, and then get with you on what that's going to cost to see if you want to want to get it shipped. Um, but I think this is going to allow us to open that up a lot easier. We're not going to open it up just globally right off the bat, but we might open up um, one or two countries and then uh, you know our most popular that we get the most calls from a request from and then just see how it works see how it works logistically for us on our end because you got to remember it's just me and her and so if we're both tied up trying to handle all the paperwork and everything that it takes uh, to get it, get something out uh, that that's uh, more involved than what we currently do then that's less time that I'm working on pattern packs or project project videos or working on my own custom stuff that we've got to build or saddles or anything else so we've got to kind of be careful on that. So we're just taking it slow. Um, I appreciate everybody's patience uh, that's, that, that isn't in the United States that, that is requesting some, some physical items. And we have a lot of people that, that uh, from, from overseas that purchase a lot of our digital pattern packs and stuff like that. And um, we've gotten a lot of requests for people wanting, you know, some of the printed ones and um, some of the, you know, caps, T-shirts, whatever. They want some of that stuff. Then uh, we're, we're working towards getting to that. So hopefully um, in 2022 we'll open up. Like I said, um, we'll start with one or two countries and uh, and see how it works, and then go from there. But hopefully that's coming quickly. But I really think it's going to be a good deal for the for the website. I think it's going to be really good. Um, the bulk of the website's going to stay the same. Our blog, um, you know, those kind of things. Our galleries, picture galleries, and all of that stuff's going to stay the same. Like I said, we will be retaining the old My Store account deal for you customers that already have that with your digital files because I don't want you to lose that. You, um, I think that's really a really beneficial thing to be able to go back and, and, and see your archived digital purchases that you've made and just because you might lose them. I've got uh, one customer that's got every single pattern that we've built or that we've created and they print them out and they put them in like really nice plastic liners in a binder and they're all organized and so you know uh, aside from a catastrophe i mean he, he's got them he's got them safe but his account is probably worth a lot to him because he's he wants to be able to you know get those patterns anytime he needs to again so we want to be sure and, and keep that so but i'm excited about it i'm, I'm excited about uh, opening it up to you guys and turning it on and getting everything everything launched so that you'll be able to see that 
and um, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. I think you're going to you're going to like the user experience much better than than what it currently is. Which I don't think it's super bad right now, but it's just kind of plain, and it's just uh, there's some limitations to it. And so this is going to be a big step forward for us on uh, the DG Leathercraft side of things, as well as the leather good products that we build. It'll make it much easier for us to put our custom pieces on there when we build a one-off custom piece and we want to upload it to the website. It's going to be much easier to do that and have that available so that our products for sale that we actually build, um, those will be great and uh, a lot lot more user-friendly for those customers too that are just coming to us wanting a belt or you know a wallet or, or a portfolio or whatever. Um, they can see what we do have available in store and they can either come by here and look at it or they can purchase it straight off the website. And we're also working on a bunch of new pattern uh, sets that'll be coming out in January as well. A lot of y'all that follow me on Instagram have probably seen my guitar strap that we made. Um, I was I was able to post that one. It is a gift for somebody, but we were able to post it because they know they're getting it, and so we were, we posted that. But that's a new design. I've always used the same guitar strap pattern for the last oh over ten or twelve years. We've used the same pattern, and so I finally sat down and I drew up something that was a little more unique i guess it was just had a little different flair to it and i really really liked it it went together really well just like the other one again they're like uh rifle slings or anything else they're not really that hard to put together they're not hard to build but they're uh the tooling patterns is something that, you know they're three inches wide so you've got a lot of room there to do artwork and stuff so we'll be working on one of those uh at the first of the year so, you know around january had a lot of people too asking about the rope bags and the rope can especially right now at christmas tons of people get rope can orders especially at christmas time and uh, we don't offer any rope can patterns at the moment, but we are gonna be working on some of those. I may just do on a rope can because there is no assembly required, basically. I mean, you build a belt with a snap on each end or, and then you glue the, the, the round piece of leather to the can, or that's how I do them. So we'll probably just do a quick video showing you how that goes about. And then what I might do is just draw up like one can with a pattern on there Print it out, that's the pattern, right? You have one one tooling pattern, and I may do, you know, just keep adding to that, like draw up one, two, three, to where we have like six or seven, you can buy the one you want instead of a pack of like seven or eight. Um, I don't know, let me know. If you, if you think it'd be better, just do a, a pack with six or eight of them in there, and, uh, and y'all would rather have that to where you have variety, or would you rather go through and pick and choose one over the other, you know, a particular one that you like? And they're gonna have to be really kind of um more rand not random but to where because a lot of people want their name on there they want their brand in the middle something like that so I'm, i'll probably do one or two with fully floral tooled and then if you want you can work it out however you need to to add the name but most of them will probably have a space in the middle for a brand or whatever and then a space at the top and the bottom for your name and stuff there's just so many ways to do that that's where the drawing course comes in really handy if you can focus on learning to draw it may take you you know, a few years to get to where you're comfortable drawing your own stuff. But the best day to start doing that is today. They start today learning how to draw because if you learn how to draw, it can really, really save you a lot of time and it makes you a lot more versatile because you don't have to hunt for patterns. And I know everybody says, well, I can't draw, I can't draw. It's because you don't draw. You've got to draw. Start drawing. Now get a get a sketch pad. If you don't take anything else from me that you know that we try to teach or put out there on YouTube, if you take one thing from me, get a sketch pad and draw in there every day. Just draw. Just draw something. It doesn't even matter if you're drawing horses or dogs or whatever, but draw. Get used to using that pencil on paper and work on drawing. And then when you see stuff online, we've talked about it before, when you see stuff on Instagram or whatever that you're inspired by that you like, try to draw it. You're not gonna put it on a wallet, steal somebody's art and sell it. You're just trying to figure out what is that person doing that you that has the attributes that you like and that, that appeals to you. Learn some of those techniques through trying to render what he's done or she's done. Um, and that's how you get started. Just just draw everything. Find some old catalogs, find whatever that you can that you can get that you can just kind of look at reference and get the mechanics behind what's going on in that drawing that's what that drawing course is that's what we try to focus on with that course is to get showing you the foundation the framework how to actually just create something that you can build upon it's not to, to it's not going to take you from zero to 60 it's going to just show you the, the basics show you the actual structure of what's going on in floral design and they give you those elements so that you can work from there 
Um, and, you know, at some point we'll probably try to come out with one that's more of an intermediate drawing course that'll talk more about some of the, some of the more complicated maneuvers and the flow work and stuff like that. But, but most of the time, whether you think you can draw or you can't, whatever, get a sketchbook and start drawing. You'll surprise yourself. And remember, that sketchbook isn't for anybody else. You're not posting these pictures on Instagram. You're not, uh, you know, asking somebody to critique. You're just drawing, just drawing there. That's kind of like your, your diary or your journal. You're not, that's not for anybody to see. So don't be disappointed when you draw something and it doesn't look good. It's not going to look good till you keep going. You got to keep going. You've got to flesh it out and, and just draw. You got to draw a bunch of junk to be able to draw anything good. So get to drawing. The quicker you get all the junk drawn out, the better you'll draw. So just start drawing. Um, but it really helps. It really helps whenever, because you get a, a request for a, uh, an oddball project or something, you don't, you're not going to find a pattern for something if it's a, if it's a one-off kind of custom piece or something like that. And so instead of trying to adapt patterns that are out there to fit this particular tooling window, you need to kind of have that skill to where at least you can kind of rough something in and then refine it and work on it from there. And I know it's Christmas time. Nobody's got time to learn to draw right now. Everybody wants to just, hey, I got an order for something. I don't know how to draw it. Do you have a pattern? If I do, boom, you're, you're good. If I don't, ugh, I don't know what you're going to do. So I know it's crunch time. We don't have time to sit down with a sketchbook and refine our skills at the moment. But after Christmas, make it a New Year's resolution that you're going to work on next year learning to draw. And um, even if you just fill up one sketchbook all year long, that's better than nothing. So buy a, buy a nice thick sketchbook for yourself for Christmas, put it in your stocking, and act surprised when you open it. It'll be good. It'll help you. By this time next year, you'll be glad you did that. But that's enough of me harping on drawing. I, I do that with everybody. Everybody that comes in here, uh, there was a gentleman in here this weekend, and that's what I was telling him was just, just draw. Don't, don't be scared. But I, I get on that deal because we always learn backwards. We learned a tool. Nobody starts leather work and says, I'm going to go buy a sketch pad and a pencil and start doing leather work. No, we go buy leather and tools and stamps and knives, and we get to whooping on leather. That's how we learn. That's how we start. But technically, we should learn to draw and then learn to tool because if you, you're drawing, well, the better your drawing gets, the better your tooling will be. But nobody does that. We all, I started the same way. I started whooping on leather. I want to whoop on leather. I want to, I want to tool something, basket stamp, whatever. So, but, but that's my rant on that. Let's work on that next year. Um, and then we're going to be working on the tooling course. It, hopefully it'll be out in January. I'm hoping, um, we're, we're just, that thing is going to be, it, it's just pretty, that thing takes a lot of work to put that together. It's, uh, a lot more work than, than the, the drawing course was. And it may be because I had written the, our little ebook for the drawing course. And so I had kind of a framework, which I have a, uh, I have a, you know, an outline. I have everything kind of chopped up and just shooting everything, but it'll probably end up being pretty long, but hopefully it's good. I don't know. We'll just throw it out there and see what happens. But yeah, 2022 is going to be fun. I'm excited. Um, I'm ready for this year to be over. It's been kind of crazy. A lot of good stuff uh, in 2021, some not so good stuff. You know, hence COVID. You know, everybody having to deal with that, and um, you know, it's been a, it's been one of those years. It's actually been one of those two years. You know, but um, but all in all, I think we're I think we're we're doing okay. I think everybody everybody is in good spirits. Hopefully, we can keep keep moving forward into 2022 and and uh, work on our businesses, work on our hobbies, whatever. Work on our skill set mainly, right? Work on our leather work skills and and um, see what we can get into next year and how much leather we can tear up. You know, because that's what it's all about, and that's why we're here. That's what we want to do. So um, I'm excited. I've got all kinds of different ideas, um, probably too many at, at one time in my brain. I probably need to write some of them down and um, and, and just store them away and, and get some of them done first before I keep adding to that. But, but let's head out there and do a snowman update right quick. And then I got to get back to work because I got to do my last ships today and be done with those and then start on my little local orders. I don't have too many, but I got a few little local orders that I'm going to work on over the weekend. And so let's go do that. And... Um, so we can get back to work. All right, by my calculations, it's eight days. Again, if you're like Claudia, it might be seven. If you're like, I don't know who, it might be nine or six. I'm not sure. I count eight days. Eight days till Christmas Day, and uh, that's a scary number because I don't feel like we've done that many uh, snowman updates. I know last year we did them, but I, I guess – I don't remember if we started after Thanksgiving or before Thanksgiving, but it seems like I haven't done very many of these this year. Um, so that number is kind of scary because that's a that's about a week. We got about a week. So, but a week's a lot of time. You got a uh, you know a lot of time in there to get your stuff done, get everything out. Like I said, I would suggest trying to hustle over the weekend, put in the long hours if you have to, 
get your last ships done by Monday at the latest is what I would recommend. And, um, and then if you got to hand deliver some stuff, then maybe you can drink some eggnog at somebody's house Christmas Eve if you have to. But I appreciate you guys watching. We'll have another Monday morning briefing next week, uh, which will be Monday because I know that this is Friday. And I apologize for this one being late, but, hey, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to get them out if we can get them out either way. But we'll see you all Monday morning in the Monday morning briefing. Be sure and go to dgsaddlery.com and subscribe to the newsletter if you can. We'll be having one of those go out next week as well. And we appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next week.